Hello everybody and welcome, it's Morgana here. Uh, in this week's video I will be demonstrating for you how to paint this lovely, simple yet effective uh, moonlit jellyfish scene. Something a little different this week. Uh, I'm using some of my own photographs for inspiration. Uh, this is one here I uh, snapped while I was visiting an aquarium recently. Uh, I thought the jellies were just so lovely and glowing against their dark background I couldn't resist. Uh, having a go at painting them with our new paints. This is one of the new collections from Davidson's Pigments, a uh, festive edition. <laughs> this is the Frostfire collection, which is a set of four iridescents. Uh, we have a blue, a green, a lilac, and a reddish colour. Uh, you get a set of four in a tin, and they're absolutely lovely to use, as you'll see in this video. If you're interested, uh, follow the link below for a little more information and to uh, purchase a few limited number of sets. Uh, but today I will be painting on black. Uh, this is black craft uh, card rather than watercolour paper, so it's quite lightweight. Um, I don't think it would stand up to a heavy wash, uh, but it actually works quite well for just this little delicate, uh, delicate painting. So uh, it's also a lovely uh, cheaper alternative to um, quite expensive heavy cotton watercolour paper, so uh, it's always a plus point. <laughs> uh, so as you can see, I've used a uh, watercolour coloured pencil to uh, gently sketch in the rough shape of the jellyfish bells, as my HB pencil wasn't showing up on the black, so uh, it's always a handy little trick to know for uh, sketching on darker coloured or coloured paper. And I'm beginning by painting in the, uh, the rough outline of the uh, main shape of the jellyfish bells using one of my iridescent paints. This is the lovely Moonstone, a beautiful glowing blue paint from the Davidson Pigments uh, Frostfire collection. Uh, but of course, any iridescent paint that you have will uh, probably give much the same effect. I'm just being quite careful with my uh, water here because of course this paper is not as thick uh, as the uh, uh, watercolour paper that I'm used to. Uh, so I'm trying not to introduce too much heavy water but also trying to keep the paint quite light. And you can see there I've just dotted in uh, a little extra colour. We've got our lovely pink, uh, pinky purple uh, burnished orchid colour here which I'm just dabbing into the blue and sort of letting it mix together. So we get that lovely sort of uh, glint and shine along the top of our friendly little jellyfish there. So I'm happy with that one for now. So I'm just going to move along uh, and start on this larger jellyfish here. I'm going to do exactly uh, the same process and just carefully using our lovely moonstone blue and just fill in uh, the overall shape, the lovely round shape of the jellyfish. Uh, I'm using quite a light layer of paint. I don't want it to be too heavy because what you can do with these paints is you can layer them up to create a sort of stronger, more opaque uh, finish, which is how I'm going to uh, try at least to uh, achieve the um, translucency that it is so uh, usual and sort of indicative of that uh, lovely, beautiful, drifting, uh, that classic jellyfish shape. I'm just using a small round brush to do this, but uh, I dare say any brush would be useful for this. I would, uh, looking back, I'd probably switch to a mop brush for this uh, larger size because it gives you a little bit better and smoother coverage. You can see here that I'm just smoothing out the paint, trying to make sure it dries uh, with a lovely sort of softness to it, rather than uh, with too many sort of hard looking uh, brush strokes left. And once again, I'm just dabbing in a little bit of extra colour just along this top side. This again is our lovely burnished orchid, uh, lilac coloured uh, iridescent paint, but of course uh, you can use whatever paints you have. Perhaps a lovely gold here would also look very pretty or a silver, just anything lovely and bright and uh, delicate. So 
So I'm going to go ahead and repeat this same process for the rest of the smaller jellyfish shapes that I have sketched out on this black paper. Uh, there we go. <laughs> you can see I got two blues and a pink, which my arm is just uh, just covered. There we go, the bottom left corner, just varying up the colours a little bit. Uh, and now all I'm doing, now I've done that, uh, you can see I'm just adding an extra layer of this iridescent uh, blue paint over the uh, the main body of this large jellyfish and just deepening the colour uh, sort of along this top line and really getting that shape uh, to stand out. And in this way we're able to get that three-dimensional uh, but also translucent effect with the jellyfish by doing a really light layer of this iridescent colour that will dry quite see-through and give them that ethereal kind of appearance. And there we are, just simply sweeping the paint along the underside of these smaller jellyfish bells to create that effect. Now, as an extra touch here, this is uh, entirely optional, but I've picked up my opaque uh, white gouache paint as well, and I'm just using it to add, uh, to strengthen rather, the details uh, of these jellyfish. You can see here, I'm just using it to line the edge of the bell of this uh, little flat jellyfish here, uh, and also to just go over the iridescent pigment to uh, create some really simple uh, but effective uh, shapes. So it's just going to give the illusion of that sort of that delicate pale structure that you often see inside the translucent uh, jellyfish bell. I do hope I'm using the word bell correctly here. <laughs> I think I am, but um, I'm not a biologist. <laughs> So I'm just going to uh, do this, the same uh, process here. You can see I'm just using a little bit of the Watertown white gouache mixed with a touch of the uh, uh, iridescent blue. And I'm just using it to really strengthen up this uh, front side of the jellyfish shape here. So we get that translucency where I'm leaving a strip at the bottom. So we get that again 3D effect uh, on the large jellyfish as well. And again, just using the, uh, the white gouache lightly to get these decorations uh, just on the top of the jellyfish to give them that extra little, little zing of detail. And so now for the fun part. Well, it should all be fun really, but for me, uh, I always enjoy this part the most. And that is uh, getting a lovely, uh, nice mix of nice watery paint on my paintbrush and drawing in these lovely long looping tentacles that are going to hang down from our jellyfish. And to do that, I'm using again the lovely blue moonstone colour, uh, but I'm also going to vary it up a little bit by using the pink and a touch of the white as well. Uh, again, you can use whichever colours you like for this. Um, I chose the blue and pink, or pinky purple rather, just as I think they go really well together. And again, I was looking at my reference photos, you've got that lovely blue and pink glow. And you could use any brush for this. A liner brush would work really well here, or a rigger, something that holds a decent amount of paint. Uh, but I really enjoy using this little small uh, round brush, which I'm doing uh, <laughs> almost the entire painting with. Uh, so there's a recommendation for you. If you're on the lookout for a small round brush, this one uh, is rather fun to use. This is my Princeton Neptune Synthetic uh, Round Size 4. And here we are, you can see I'm just adding in a little bit of extra colour, these little pops of purple in amongst the blue. 
Um, I do apologise as well if my voice is a little bit uh, creaky and croaky today. Um, I'm recovering from a recent bout of flu which has left me a little bit wiped out uh, but still just about capable of painting uh, as you can see. So now you can see I'm adding in a little bit of the white gouache, uh, a little bit stronger this time. You can see how boldly that is standing up against the uh, the colours that are already on there and against this uh, black craft paper or craft card, I believe it is. Slightly thicker than paper, but it's certainly not as thick as a, a usual watercolour paper. I think I usually use 140 weight uh, watercolour paper, so this was uh, a challenge to use, but a bit of fun one. I, I do love a challenge. And you can see it hasn't wrinkled or buckled nearly as much as I would expect and it actually has worked really well uh, with these uh, new iridescent uh, paints that I'm trying out here. So now I'm happy with those extra little details that, the, uh, that I put on with the white gouache paint. Uh, I'm really happy with the jellies, so all that uh, remains now is to use a fan brush to spatter in um, some delicate little light droplets of uh, each of the paints that I've used to sort of uh, give that impression that these uh, jellies are adrift in a moonlit sea. We get the little glints and sparkles of plankton in the, all the waters uh, around them, perhaps that's what they're feeding on. Uh, plankton and a sort of phosphorescent beautiful little bits and bobs. So as you can see, I've spattered in a little bit of the blue moonstone and a little bit of the purple burnished orchid as well. And now lastly, I'm just spattering in a tiny little bit of the white gouache too. And here it is now that it is dry and finished. Uh, I'm really pleased with uh, how this has come out. I think this is a very sweet, uh, this is a lovely little illustration. It does make me smile. Uh, I do love sea creatures, so this uh, really one really did put a smile on my face. And you can see I'm just uh, moving the paper here so you can see the uh, iridescence of these beautiful paints, how they shine in the light, how they can look almost ghostly in the sunlight, and then you just move it and you get that wonderful ripple and shimmer of colour. Uh, so I really hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as uh, I enjoyed painting this little illustration. I uh, hope you found it useful, perhaps inspiring. Uh, if you're interested in the um, Davison's Pigments uh, Frostfire collection, these are limited edition paints. We have a few sets available for sale at time of uh, this video release. Uh, not many as uh, due to illness, the uh, production line was somewhat slowed this month. Um, so if you're interested, please follow the link below to my Etsy store where there will be uh, any that are left. So thank you everybody again for watching, a huge thank you as always to my wonderful uh, Patreon members who support this channel, you're all fabulous. Uh, if that's something you're interested in becoming uh, a Patreon member then I'll pop the link uh, to my page below as well and you can check that out if you fancy. Uh, but thanks again everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you all again soon in the next one.